Good morning, it's March 13th. This is Two My Liberal Friends. Well, yesterday I told you I was going to start talking a little bit about the tax code and what Biden is suggesting. And he's out on the campaign trail, and it's apparent that he'll say anything to win some votes. One thing has become apparent that he has no understanding how the tax code works, or maybe he just cannot remember his advanced age. And let's get right to the point. Joe Biden and his fellow Democrats love to use a particular term when it comes to taxes. They want the wealthy to pay their fair share. And they repeat this term over and over, but nobody ever defines what the term means. Exactly what is someone's fair share? Biden went to the tax question in the State of the Union, and I'm quoting him, you know, there are 1,000 billionaires in America. You know what the average federal tax is for those billionaires? Well, the Democrats in the chamber immediately yelled, zero. And Biden told him no, and he said, quote, they're making great sacrifices, 8.2%. The Democrats all booed, and then Biden went on, that's far less than the vast majority of Americans pay. No billionaire should pay a lower federal tax rate than a teacher, a sanitation worker, or a nurse, end quote. So the question I have is, where did he get this information? I'm sure it sounds good to his base, but it's entirely within his imagination, or should I say the speechwriter who helped him with this fantasy, and devoid of real facts. First, consider his claim that the tax rate paid by billionaires is 8.2%. That plays well with the soak the rich leftists, but where did he get this number? Not from the IRS. It calculates the actual tax rate that various income groups pay, including the ultra-rich, his definition of wealthy. It data shows that the 400 people with the biggest incomes in America were paying an average tax rate of more than 23%. Congressional Joint Committee on Taxation figures that top, top tax rate for the top four Tenths of a percent of families is 26%. And looking at the middle class, their average tax rate is about 14%. And then we have to look at the bottom 50% of the taxpayers where their rate is 3.4% with the majority of them paying no federal income taxes because of tax credits. What's their fair share? And I use the term federal income taxes for a reason. If you include what you pay in FICA taxes, then you better start deducting the benefits you get when you start collecting Social Security and go on Medicare. These taxes are a form of insurance. Since it's now obvious that this 8.2% number is sheer fantasy, you have to ask how they come up with that number. Well, it's simple. Joe Biden and his left-wing staff just changed the definition of taxable income to include all unrealized gains from any investment you make. Let me explain what that means and how it can affect you. If you have money in the stock market, you may be in trouble under Biden's tax schemes. Assume you purchased 100 shares of stock in a company and the price was $10 a share. After a year, the price per share has risen to $14. But you've not sold the stock, and you're hopeful it will continue to rise. But under Biden's tax plans, you have to pay taxes on that gain. Now, you haven't really got it, and it may go down. But what this real goal was in his speech was to artificially increase the income of people so it would appear that they're paying a lower rate. Again, you may not, you, until you sell the stock, you don't really have that money. But that's the narrative that Biden and his team are trying to sell. Now, he knows this is fantasy. And the Supreme Court is currently deciding a case involving a couple who had to pay taxes on an offshore investment for which they received no div dividends or distribution. They received no real money. If they side with the plaintiffs, they would put an end to the left's tax the wealth schemes. Tax the wealth is another major part of Biden's political campaign. He's proposing a minimum tax on billionaires of 25%. Well, according to Biden, that would raise $500 billion over the next 10 years. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Except Biden is hoping nobody noticed the caveat. That is $500 billion over 10 years. In other words, $50 billion a year. And even that might sound like a lot until you put it into context. The $50 billion in a year wouldn't even cover one month's worth of interest payments on the national debt, which was $69.2 billion in January. It wouldn't even pay half of the increase in the deficit the first five months of this year compared with last year. And the deficit from October through February was $830 billion which adds up to $108 billion from the same months the year before. The idea that an extra $50 billion could finance a new child care entitlement, paid leave, home care, isn't just ludicrous, it's insane. But Biden's making it sound like it is, and he's taking a talking point to his base without realizing how foolish the facts make it sound. The real facts are that Joe Biden does not really understand the tax code. He's simply reading what some of his young liberal staff member writes for him. Those young staffers think it's a solution to somehow tax anyone with money. They will hopefully come to realize how foolish this is later in their life. And it reminds me of the famous quote that's actually falsely attributed to Winston Churchill, but it still rings true. If you're not a liberal at 25, you don't have a heart. If you're not a conservative at age 35, you don't have a head. This has been Two My Liberal Friends. 
Thanks for listening.